Hey beautiful people, welcome back to a new video. I hope that everybody is well. I hope that you're in a good health and that things are extremely well now that you're here at the MCJ's art studio and you're watching a new video. So today I'm gonna give you part two of the last video where I was talking about commissions and how you go about it. So these videos are not here to explain you how you get the commission. This is more the after part. So what do you do at the moment that you get a commission? What are the things that you need to think about when it comes to commission, the handling of it, how you behave, what, what the appointments are, you know, etiquette. In one word, etiquette of, of um, doing commissions, best practices. And in my last video, I gave two pointers of what you need to take into consideration. If you haven't watched it, which is actually really weird to me, yeah, if you haven't watched it, and you're sitting here watching part two, mm, okay, maybe it would be good to go and watch part one first. Okay, in the corner here somewhere, you will find the link. Go watch part one first. I see a lady here, okay, I will see you later. Okay, now are only the people that watch, they already watched it? So y'all already watched part one? Okay, then it's okay, you can listen. Okay, so part one, I discussed two pointers and now I'm gonna go and continue with the next two, which brings me to number three, which I consider something that no one actually talks about, but something that I myself had to build up to and I know I cannot be the only one who had this feeling that this is one of the most important parts of doing a commission, and that is confidence. Have confidence in what it is that you do. Listen, you might not have handled many commissions, and I gotta be honest with you, I don't know how much many is. Many can be relative, right? You might have handled five, Another person might have handled a hundred and still gets anxious each and every time when they get a commission, right? Some people have handled five and they're like on top of the world. But for most people, it can be a kind of a, you know, it, it can give you some anxiety. Could be in a bad way, but maybe also in a good way. However, in any case, have the confidence that it is, that you know what it is that you are doing. You know your art. You are the creator. You are the creator. And the person that is commissioning you, whether that is a, whether that's an organization or a big brand or an individual, there are of course some differences here and there. Nevertheless, they come to you because they have seen your work. They have seen your portfolio or they have maybe spoke to you and you have shown your art to them. You might have presented yourself in a very amicable and open way that made them feel very comfortable. And now they are sitting here at your table. Or maybe they uh, send you an email. Or maybe they had you on the phone and said, we absolutely would love to work with you. And this is an assignment that we have for you. Be confident that you can do the job and that you are in control of what it is that you can do. There's a reason why they want you so don't start comparing yourself to others. Don't start panicking about what am I gonna do? Do I have enough time? These are all obstacles, mind games, basically, that you're putting into your into yourself that cause blockages. And I have read stories from people that would get that anxious at such a level that they basically said, I'm not gonna do commissions because the level of anxiety for me is getting way too high. They're thinking way ahead into the future or they are imagining things that actually are things they do not need to be worried about. Not at all. So have confidence. The second pointer is one that I think is... Um... Now, first of all, I'm mentioning the, po the pointers in no particular order. But if I had to put something at number one, it would be this one. And that is put 
everything in writing. Put everything that you say and that the other person, the other party has said, every appointment, every telephone call, every revision, every point of contact where you're talking about the process of your work, put it into writing. Put it into writing. Yes, what do I mean by that? Make a log, basically a log book, where you are um, writing down or typing into your laptop or writing down in your notebook everything that has been happening from start to finish. So let's, for instance, say a person is contacting you to commission you and they have an assignment for you. You have a meeting after that through telephone or maybe through a Zoom or team meeting. That could be also possible. After that, send an email to the other party or an individual of everything that has happened so far. So you have been contacted, you had a meeting and a certain date at a certain time from that meeting, this appointment has been made and you will go forward um, with ABC. What it does is it creates a log. And in that log, if anything happens or any confusion or unclarity that might rise to the surface can be solved instantly because you have a reference point at each moment of your journey. It takes a little bit of time, I know, and it's a little bit of administrative work. Maybe it lies more in my nature to do that because I basically worked in administration for almost 20 years. So I know how important it, it is to follow up with emails. Even if you had a telephone call with someone, you follow up with an email to make sure that whatever it is that you have discussed, both parties um, are notified. And if a party is like, well, I've never received information on that, you can always check your email and say, well, that is not completely true. So for me, that is a way of backing my, actually backing my shit up. And it's especially handy when you are dealing with bigger organizations and bigger brands because they have a whole team that takes care of that. And if you are an independent artist just like me and you're just solely doing things or you might be, use, you might be using the, the, the help of freelancers or maybe peers in your own tribe, in your own network, that, that is a little bit different, right? The, the, the balance is, is skewed, right? So the way that you can protect yourself in this process is to put everything in writing. I don't care if it is tedious. It is, period. Just accept it, radical acceptance. It's tedious work. However, I guarantee you, it will help you along the way. You will have a log book. Again, if you're working with bigger companies, bigger organizations, it will help you just have everything on record, have everything at place. And there's another reason why it's very important for you to put everything into writing. Because based on the two factors, the two pointers that I've mentioned in my first part, it will also be part of your work's copyright, right? The creative right of owning what it is that you have created. The creative legal right of owning and using your art. When you put that into writing based on the commission that you're getting and based on the contact that you are having with the other party, you are having clear boundaries over what the intention and the use of your artwork eventually can be used for what is intended for. If you do not put these things into writing and you leave this gray area for people just to use it because you are so excited that someone has commissioned you and you know, your name is attached to a brand. I totally, I totally get it. So this is not to shame or fault anyone. I can so, yeah, I can so see the excitement of that. However, rational now comes into place where you have to put everything into writing and make sure that what your commission is intended for will also be used in that particular way. Record everything, 
okay make a law again it is tedious work accept it i cannot make it any prettier <laughs> i can't accept it i guarantee you my friend oh, my friend huh i guarantee you it will help you each and every single time each and every single time okay So the next pointer that I want to take into consideration when it comes to commissions, and I already mentioned it in the previous part, and that is copyright. Now with the two pointers from the last video, the previous video, and me talking about creating a log of everything that you're doing, copyright comes very much into play. And it's very important when it comes to a commission because what you create has a purpose. It has a purpose. It is intended for something. Let's give you an example. Let's say a bank comes to you because you create digital art and they want you to create a specific art piece because they are opening a new um, financial product. And they are hoping that they can attract a certain audience between the age of 18 and 25. Um, with a certain, you know, number of factors that are connected to that. And they want you to create an artwork that reflects that audience and will convince them to open or get into that financial product that they are offering that audience. They mention to you what they want, how big it needs to be, how small. You are having a couple of conversations with them of what it is that you want to create. They think it's great. It's beautiful. Absolutely great. Uh, you have discussed the terms of the contract and you have also discussed uh, the quotation. They are absolutely happy with the quotation. Here is another important factor, and maybe that is a shared position with number one. <laughs> shared position with number one. Um, copyright. In everything that you do, copyright plays a significant role. Not immediately, but it has a, how can I say this? It is the fundament on everything that has been built upon. Your copyright is the way a commission has been set up. So in the example that I've given, the copyright could, for example, say, the digital art can only be used from um, year of, or, or for six months. I'm saying a year, but that is also possible. It can be used for six months. It can only be used um, on the website of that particular bank. It cannot be used for printing. If it wants, if it's needed for printing, then an additional cost is added to that per X amount of editions. And if people want to use the digital art for other purposes, then they will have to come back to you and renegotiate the terms of the conditions. I know that a lot of people do not think about this. A lot of people don't think about this. <laughs> and it is actually a fundament of a commission. You are granting someone to make use of what it is that you've created. Now, when it comes to individuals coming to you, their purpose would most of the time be something that is very specific to an event or something to their interior or you know, decorative purposes, maybe for their portfolio, things like that. So it's not something that they use to, for commercial purposes, like reselling something, right? But you could take that into account when it comes to the copyright. You could take into account, like, listen, if you're using this, for instance, to sell a product, then we have to have different you know, conditions to this contract, to this commission, then when you are using this for just for the decoration of your home, right? 
if a business comes to you and they say they want to have an artwork from you and you say okay well where are you going to hang it is it in your home or maybe in a business uh, venue then it has a commercial purpose the commercial purpose is that it adds value to the atmosphere of that business venue so the conditions are just a little bit different see where i'm going to you could say well Marilfa, these are minor details but trust me if you're working on a more professional level these details will eventually cost you money if you do not take them into consideration. And a good example of that is the following case, which is still ongoing. I would like for you to go to Google and type in the next name, Crystal Fistball. I will mention her name as well in the description box. Kristen I think it's Kristen. Kristen Fisball. If not, you will find it in the in the description box. You will find the right uh, name for this artist. Look up her case. I will link it in the description box. I kid you not. She is a prime example of why it is important to take into consideration copywriting into your um, into into commissions especially when it comes to bigger parties like banks or a, a fashion manufacturer or a, a pattern designer a pattern um, buyer someone who buys patterns for their um, retail services or wholesale services these are just examples of course and maybe i'm not even saying it correctly <laughs> <laughs> so just bear with me. You, you get the just of, of what it is that I'm saying. Type in her name in Google. Read about her case. I even discussed this in a podcast. And I will also link the podcast to this where I discuss it. And um, you do have to go to my Patreon to see the full view of what I'm discussing into this. But how, nevertheless, it is a good thing to just, you know, get into this is a really great example of why it is important to take into consideration bigger commissions with copyrights because it can cost you a lot of money. Okay, so I hope that part one and part two are great pointers that you can use in your own practice. Again, real life teaches more than what any book can teach you, right? Real life is the point where you get to apply the theory that you have learned, apply the things that you have learned. And of course, this will warrant you. It won't warrant you from making any mistakes. Everybody has to make mistakes. I, in the past, have made, have made a mistake that I did not take into account shipping costs. And I had to pay it out of my own pocket. Well, I was like, uh, that's not going to happen again. <laughs> we are not going through that again. So I even learned my mistakes when it comes to, um, you know, my own practice when it comes to commissions. I also been in a situation very recently where someone asked me, and this is someone that I know from the past, you know, we used to uh, do dance classes together and she was like, oh, I want to have a, you know, a great present from a friend of mine. And I was thinking about a painting. I was thinking about this size, which was a pretty decent size. I think it was 40 by 60. And I gave her a starting price. And in I think it was like 15 minutes or maybe 30 minutes later that she said, oh, I didn't even imagine that it would cost that much. And it wasn't like a huge amount. I mean, I'm saying now it's not a huge amount, but it is an amount where I start, you know, you know, valuing my work. We start from that particular point. And I explained to her very simply and just succinctly, but simply and open in an open way like well i can imagine that if you do not know anything about this and this can of course be something that you're not used to however it is surprising that i start with my work and 
you know, it will definitely create something for you that is going to be very memorable. If you want to consider maybe a smaller size, it can also be possible, you know, open to discussion. What I always say, open to discussion, but I could already get from her answer that she was not expecting that amount. Maybe she was expecting something for like 50, you know, 75 euros. And I'm like, nah, sis, no, what you're asking me is to do real work. <laughs> You're asking me to do some real work. So it has, a, you know, it has a price tag. And again, I could have easily said, well, what is your budget? Let me do it for that budget. But that would not be feeling good to me. Right. Unless I consider it to be for, I consider it to be for a cost that I'm like, okay, I'm willing to go lower for that because it is a cost, a good cost. It is for maybe the progression of a certain uh, marginalized group you know, maybe then I would do that. I definitely would do that. But if you're a consumer or you are a, an organization, you're a business, then my rates are the rates. The price is the price. The price is the price. And I'm like, I'm, I'm not mad about it. You know, in the past I could get mad about that. I was like, Oh, I don't understand why people did. I also want to do, you know, I want to be professional, but now I'm like, ciao. Listen, you can say yes, you can say no. That's all I can say. You can say yes, you can say no. And if you say no, there's going to be someone who says yes. And that has never disappointed me. Not ever. It has never disappointed me. So do with it what you can do with it. Take what fits you, what feels good to you, adjust what needs to be adjusted for yourself and I guarantee you you will have you know a set of conditions that will help you in each and every particular situation we are now going to the collector uh, the foundation actually and I still have to make the certificates of art authenticity certificates of authenticity certificate is nothing more than a piece of paper that says who made it what's the medium what's the size and what's the name of the uh, artwork that a person is purchasing it gives the person the guarantee that what they are purchasing is authentically uh, made by the artist and in some cases you will find whether there are multiple uh, pieces of it but in this case it's just one piece of each so you will find the name the medium the size who made it and also what the name of the artwork is so those will be sent uh i always say the beginning of the week but it ends up later on this week because these actually had to be sent at the beginning of the week um but it's now sunday <laughs> it's now Sunday but fortunately you know good communication everything goes well and he was very happy with the other two so these are probably also going to be very you know he's going to receive them well so uh, I'm gonna make them in a couple of minutes I have to make them in a couple of minutes I was kind of thinking of you know, I want to do something special with the certificate so that it has like a, a certain feel that is really MCJ Studio. I don't know if I just want to place it on a piece of paper. That is what normally happens. But knowing who I am, I'm going to always try to find something really special with it. If not, I'm just going to leave it as it is. We don't have to make it more com complicated than necessary. Eventually, it is. It, it, it's just notifying that whomever buys a piece of art from moi will have something that is authentically made by me so this one is ready for delivery tomorrow morning i will be delivering it at the post office um i already bought a a um shipping label but i don't know if the ship related label is still valid so i have to check if it's still valid if not i have to pay for another one it's not that expensive but it's not really efficient so that's my own fault I have to check that off on my list of things that we will not do anymore. 
So I'm gonna check if the shipping label is still valid. Furthermore, um, starting with my own project. So uh, the last painting for I Am Still King will be finished. Then uh, I'm gonna start with a new project. I'm kind of thinking of how I want to do that. So I'm just gonna write it down and start, you know, just letting the imagination go free. I still have to do affordable art. Um, the drawing that I was busy with and just um, just fell into the background into into the dark. We're gonna take her out of the dark, bring her back to life, all the way to life. So that will be finished. I think I'm gonna leave it for one illustration for this particular month and next month I'm gonna create a new one and in December I'm gonna create a new one, seeing that I will be having a lot more time to create them. So I'm very actually I'm very happy with the illustration. The illustration looks absolutely gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. She is absolutely beautiful, absolutely stunning, le stunning. Okay, absolutely stunning. So I'm kind of doubting if I just want to sit, let it be at one. So I was thinking about a collage type of thing. Um, I love collages and I've been looking into that from with other artists that I've been following on Instagram also You know just looking around scouting around it really speaks to me the use of collages and I think it has to do with the fact that my grandmother she used to make these um, quilts from different pieces of fabric and I have one that she gave to me I'm very I'm, I'm not using it as much as I want to but I still have it in my possession and it's very dear to me. It's very, very, very dear to me. And um, I also know that it has a certain, it has a certain background in our Afro, Afro-Caribbean um, heritage. I don't know if people still are doing it. I do know a couple of artists that make use of collages. So basically using pieces of images that can come out of magazines, newspapers, um other type of media and they bring it all together to create a new piece of art and i also am following one artist um her name is i hope i'm saying it right lisa butler i will put her name here in the screen i will look it up and put her name here in the screen i absolutely love her work it is outstanding and again, it reminds me of something that my grandmother used to do back in the day. She would just sit down, have all of these pieces of fabric and sew them together so that you will have this big quilt, this big blanket. And she could make like a lot of them. The point is, because I'm, I'm, I'm going all the way left. The point is, I kind of want to go against this whole trend where people are constantly pumping out new work as if it is as if it's a machine that we are trying to feed. Social media is the machine and we and our art are the food. We now have become the content. We as people, as the artists and the creative have now become the content instead of we us of us just creating the content and putting it out when it's ready to be put out and not having to force ourselves to be in this FOMO atmosphere, right? For those who do not know what FOMO is, fear of missing out. So I'm going against that. It, it, it also leans to, and I don't know if y'all agree with that. You know, let me know in the comments if y'all agree with this, yes or no. If you don't agree with it, let me know what it is. I really would like to have this conversation, an open conversation where we respectfully can talk about this. Um, it, it, it also is this infusion and confusion with hustle culture, the hustle mentality. Which is nothing more than just a very slick way for for um you know a capitalistic system to sustain itself and to keep on going i don't believe i'm not against the capitalistic system not totally but what i refuse to do is that i become a 
a bolt or an element or a piece within that system. Um, I don't believe that my best work will be produced if I go into that particular mentality, the hustle mentality. I don't believe that my audience would, would um, I, I don't believe I will attract the right audience because it's just the next thing that I'm generating and it's the next trend that I'm going for, which is so not in my nature to do. Um, I'm a very explorative person, but I also understand that there have to be ways for me to sustain myself in a way that I'm not suffering. If you catch my breath, right? We ain't got to suffer. We ain't got to go broke, people. We ain't got to go broke. I'm not to the, uh, no. We ain't got to go broke. So we don't have to go broke for it. You do have to produce. You do also have to be realistic and say, well, this is something that I definitely can make a living from and not just a living. So not that you live for it, but that it is your lifestyle and that you comfortably can live from it. Um, I'm just not for the whole thing where we are uh, being eaten by the machine. That is how it kind of feels to me. We are being eaten by the machine and we are uh, kind of drowning. We are kind of drowning in it. We are drowning because we are seeing how much of it is being required of us and that we are afraid to be missed, overlooked, not seen. There is already this competition based on the fact that there are just a lot more artists on the market than there are art galleries and art you know art museums and institutions that can display artists work represent artists it literally is who do you know and who can put you in front of the right people it is really that whew, it's really that tight so to put extra pressure upon us to say well you have to create new content each and every day just simply because you're afraid to be forgotten or if you don't do it, then your audience will go to the next artist that can do that. That's a competition that I'm not willing to go into. Okay, that is not what my art is about. I don't mind challenging myself. I don't mind finding ways that I can look for that I can work more efficiently. Um, but what I will not do is compromise myself in order to feed a system, to feed this machine and i don't know if i'm the only one who's seeing it this way or that there are people saying well listen this is just the way that we are you know this is the life that we are currently getting into the digital world let me know you know hit me up in the comments let me see what it is that you're thinking about i would love to see how people are looking at this and how much of you all are seeing into this or um or not also people that are collecting i would love to hear from you as well how do you feel about this do you feel that um you are being bombarded with offers of the newest trend the newest artist the, the, the newest emerging artist the newest newest of the emerging merging artist the newest newest of the latest of the emerging emerging artists what the hell <laughs> This baby is going uh, to the post office tomorrow and we're going back to work.